Okay, on to Genesis chapter 9. Post-flood, reset, reboot, you might say. Um, everything's destroyed, so they're starting from scratch, brand new. No structures, no homeland, no um, relevance to what was before. Well, at this point now, a full year before when they disembark. <clears throat> and now God says in chapter 9, verse 1, he blessed them and told them, go and be fruitful and multiply and fill the whole earth. So this is pretty much exact words that Adam and Eve heard. No, we're post-flood and now they've got basically of those four families, the three sons of Noah and Noah and his wife. They're now to repopulate the entire earth. So we're going to have kind of a fast forward and a, a pacing forward. Noah left 300 350 years after the flood so they're going to continue to just start rebuilding society from the ground up all of those families and you know they're going to have children they're going to have children's children they're going to have extended generations and extended families uh, within a short amount of time um, so you kind of have to wrap your mind around that all everything is brand new totally brand new all over again um, so Verse 4, we can see God's conversation with, with Noah. Uh, one caveat to enjoying all of the food, all of the animals, all of the plant life is you have to drain the blood. You cannot, it's forbidden to, to eat food with blood in it. And this is, this is kind of the beginning of God making a point of the blood. Life is in the blood. And... Uh, in fact, he goes on to prohibit man taking life of another man or his own blood should be shed. Uh, so this goes back to Cain and Abel, essentially. And God's introducing capital punishment. And, and there are some who would say this is the beginning of a true government system, governmental structure, uh, where prior to the flood it was, it was simply every man's own conscience. And there was a, a default in the culture uh, based on human nature. Uh, so God's instituting a government structural backbone at this point. And then follow that up in verse 8 all the way to 17. Uh, God goes over the Noahic covenant, unconditional covenant, one of four major covenants in the Bible, five major covenants. Um, <clears throat> well, I would say six, actually. But six major covenants in the Bible, this is the first one we see that it's all on God. He's like, I'm not going to flood the earth again. And here's the rainbow that's the sign of it. Uh, so the rainbow becomes a sign now. And it also is part of the change in atmosphere that perhaps no one had seen a rainbow yet. And now God's instituting the rainbow. When it rains, the rainbow reminds us it's not a flood that's worldwide again. And uh, actually God mentioned specifically, he won't flood the whole earth again. Uh, so that context, there have been um, territorial floods. So God is, is making it pretty clear. He's not going to repeat destroying the whole earth. And then the last section is Noah, as he ages, he fails in an area. And uh, Ham, and uh, apparently Ham's son, uh, Canaan, by extension, mocked Noah. Now we're not clear what that really means. Noah was drunk and found naked but um in that process there's a lesson there of honoring your elders and then it says the last verse Noah died and Noah died we'll read it real quick all the days of Noah were 950 years and he died Noah lived 950 years at the flood he was 600 he got the word from the Lord at 500 and now 950 years he he dies ultimately. So that's Genesis chapter 9 in a quick synopsis. Hope you enjoy reading it, study it on your own.